The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan is doing. And we are to be aware of what's going to happen in the end times so that we don't fall into the devil's mess. Now, one of the interesting teachings concerning the Word of God, okay, so I'm going to draw a, uh, I'm just going to draw whatever right here. Laser yeah, yeah, it's a laser blaster, that's right, brother. No, it's a trumpet, thank you. <laughs> Stan's fired. Sean, you're hired. So, so this is uh, the trumpet. Now, here's the thing, is that there are seven trumpets in the Bible, but that happens during the tribulation, which is Revelation. So in Revelation, you will see seven trumpets mentioned. However, this occurs at Revelation, thus it's a tribulation time period. Now, we believe in two different raptures. We believe there is one at the tribulation and we believe there is also one in the church age. So then we see right here in the church age it will be Pauline epistles, Corinthians and Thessalonians. We see that. Now the reason why we believe in a distinguishing of the rapture is because they're very very different. I gave a video on that one but here's one interesting video that I'm going to show you about the rapture sound. When God calls us home, it is likened to the last trump for Christians. That's different from Revelation, where it goes seven trumpets. But that's not how it works for the Christian church. Seven trumpets distinguished from the trumpet voice. So there is a distinguishing right here, and I'm going to explain why. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to start at verse 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. The Bible says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now take your other hand to now keep your hand at 1 Corinthians 15. Keep your hand there. Go to 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Scripture with scripture shows the right interpretation to the Bible. Scripture with Scripture. We're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now notice that 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 1 Corinthians 15, 52, that we see that the Christian rapture is mentioned. One day we're going to be changed and go up to heaven. But what did the verse say? It said trump. But in Revelation, it's called seven trumpets. Now, here's the problem. There's a group of heretics, and they're called the post-tribulation or pre wrath people. They believe Christians will go through the tribulation, and they insist that the trumpet that's mentioned at 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 is the last trumpet at Revelation. The reason why is this is because if you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 52 again, it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. So notice right there, it says, last trump. So thus, meaning that there must be a final trumpet noise. So that's what they're going to insist. If you look at that same verse, you'll notice it says, the trumpet shall sound. So because it says the trumpet shall sound, and it says last trump, they automatically assume this is going to be the seventh final trumpet at Revelation, thus proving a tribulation rapture, not a rapture before the tribulation, which is our group. However, there is a flaw to that one. The reason why there is a flaw to that one is very simple. It's because we insist right here that this is not the seven trumpets. This is the trumpet voice. That's what we're stressing on. Why? Because it's not just a trumpet. It's a trumpet voice. Why? One, because it says in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15, it says trump. 
It stresses Trump. In fact, if you look at 1 Thessalonians 4, it only says Trump. There is no trumpet. Another thing is that if the word Trump is only found, only found in your Christian rapture, not this rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4. Why? Because a Trump, I don't know if you know this, Trump is distinguished from a trumpet with a sound a trumpet makes. That's what Trump means. Trump means a sound a trumpet makes. That's why we stress right here in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it's a trump, it's the trumpet voice, the sound a trumpet makes, not one of the actual seven trumpets. So that's one. But not, but not only that, it's the trumpet voice, right? Who does it belong to? It's God's voice. When God calls out, see, it's going to sound like a trumpet. Now, before you say, oh, I don't believe that, well, first of all, look at Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And look at verse 1, Revelation chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 1. Notice what the Bible says right here, Revelation chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 1. The Bible says right there, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice... See that voice, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. See that? It's not a trumpet itself, one of the seven trumpets. It's a trumpet voice, a sound a trumpet makes. And notice, look at this. It looks like a rapture, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. Look at that, come up hither. And then John the writer, he goes, boom, up to heaven like that. That matches a lot with 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4 with a trumpet voice because it says Trump won and it actually happened at Revelation chapter 4. And what's interesting is that Revelation 4, John is pictured as a church. But aside from that, let's also look at Revelation 8. Revelation 8. Now remember, 1 Thessalonians 4, what does it say? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the what? Trump of God. Why to say Trump of God? Because it's God's voice that's speaking out, a sound he makes. This one is not. This one is sounded by seven angels. That's why this is proof this is not the same as Revelation. God is calling out here. The angels are blowing the instrument right here. If you don't believe me, look at Revelation 8. <clears throat> Here's a verse on the seven trumpets. Look at verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the who? Three angels which are what? yet to sound, the final three. Thus the seventh is by an angel. This one is not, this is from God. Has this happened? Yeah, Revelation 4, you saw that, God calling. Not only that, look at the book of Exodus 20, Exodus 20, God did that. When God calls out the people, it's, a, it's his trumpet voice. Look at Exodus 20. That's why, do you know why it says last trump? I'll give you a hint why. It's a last trump because it's a final call for, for God to the Christian church. Because throughout the entire Bible, he has always done that. That's why it's called last trump. Because throughout the Bible, God has always done that. But then with the Christian church, he's going to give a final call. Because what's going to happen right here at the book of Revelation is that the angels are going to sound the instruments right here. We're going to look at the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. If you don't believe me, then we saw Revelation 4 as one evidence, but we're going to keep looking. God has done this throughout the Bible. He's done this with his voice many times. But then he's going to do a final one, and I'm waiting for that final one. Amen. That's why it's last trump, see? Now look at Exodus chapter 20, and you know the Ten Commandments, right? In these Ten Commandments, the famous Ten Commandments, do you think God gave it in a lovey-dovey voice? No, when he gave these Ten Commandments, he did it at a voice in verse 18. 
And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the what? Trumpet. Now look at this. Notice it says noise of the trumpet, right? See, because it's a trumpet sound, it's stressing that, trumpet voice. Why? Who's talking? And the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But what? Let not God speak with us, lest we die. Good. Boom. Right there. And not only that, go to the book of Psalms, chapter 47. Psalms 47. And while you're turning to Psalms 47, let me add this. Didn't 1 Thessalonians 4, the Christian rapture said, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a what? Shout. See, and then it says trump. See, it's more than, it's not, it's more than just a trumpet instrument, like Revelation 7. This is a trumpet voice. It's the sound itself from God Almighty, the great I Am. That ain't no regular trumpet, bless God. We're going to look at Psalms chapter 47 and verse 5. God is gone up, see that, like a rapture, up to heaven with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a what? Boom, again, see that? When you, there's this strange thing about going up to heaven with Revelation 4 that associates with trumpet voice. If that's not enough, also look at the book of Job 39. Job 39. Job 39. That Bible is amazing, is it not? That Bible is amazing. It's really sad that a lot of churches aren't teaching this. You know why? Because they don't know much Bible. They don't study the Bible. But that Bible has always been given out by people. But people don't take the Bible seriously. Instead, what's really sad is that they prefer what they want to do in their kind of organization. I see that in a lot of Baptist churches, unfortunately. And not just Baptists, obviously, all kinds of denominations and religions. They like to go in a traditional, ordinary format rather than studying the book itself. And that's why it's important to go to a Bible-believing church where you can get all that unlocked and you're like, wow, I never saw that that way before. And that book will always open your eyes and amaze you that you never saw before. We're going to look at Job chapter 39 and verse 25. He saith among the what? Trumpets, ha ha. And he smelt the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Boom. See, when God speaks, there's trumpet noise. That's why what we stress right here in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, this ain't no ordinary trumpet like Revelation. It's the trumpet voice. Why? Because it says Trump specifically. God done that before at Revelation 4 and the book of Exodus and the book of Psalms and the book of Job. And not only that, what you also notice is that it belongs to God and that's not sounded or blasted by an angel. There's no doubt. There is a difference right here. There is a difference right here. And yes, he did rapture people that way. When you go up to heaven, it's done before. Why? The book of Psalms. Revelation 4, come up hither. And if you don't want to believe that's a rapture, then Revelation 11, he says that same phrase, come up hither, and they go up to heaven. And even post-trippers cannot deny that one. So see, there's no doubt, there's an association of going up to heaven, some rapture with God's trumpet voice. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It is evidenced throughout the Bible. Now we're going to look at this verse at Job 39, verse 25. He saith among the trumpets, ha ha. But notice what's associated with that. Thunder of the captains and the shouting. Right? Remember Exodus 19? Uh, we saw those verses. Um, to us, the rapture, this is to us, the Christians. It's going to be the voice of God for us Christians. But what about people who are not saved in the Lord Jesus Christ? To them, it's not going to be the trumpet voice of God. They're not going to hear it clearly like that. To them, they're going to hear it like thunder to lost people. We saw that at what passage? We saw that at Job 39 and Exodus 19, uh, Exodus 20, excuse me. 
What did the Bible say? The trumpet voice. It had thunders with it, right? The lost people, they will mistake that to be as thunder. But say people, they will know God's voice. And they can tell that's him speaking. Oh, there's no scripture verse on that. I am glad you said that. Let's look <laughs> at the scriptures. That Bible will blow up your mind. I mean, people don't read the Bible. People just don't read the Bible. So look at John 12. John 12. John chapter 12. If you're not one of his, you're going to mistake it to be thunder. John chapter 12. So we saw Job 39, Exodus 20, that it's associated with thunder. But John 12 is really going to show it. Look at John chapter 12. And the scriptures will open your eyes so many times over and over again. We're going to look at John chapter 12. And we will read verse... Twenty-three. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hours is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And look at verse 27. So Jesus Christ says, Let your Son be glorified, Lord. And how does God respond? Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. They, then came there a voice from heaven. See that? God's voice. But look saying, I have both glorified it and, glo and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, sa said that it what? Others said, an angel spake to him. Look at that. They're all going to mistake it. You know what the lost world is going to do? They're all going to go, when the rapture sounds, we know what it is. God's calling us. We're going up to heaven. The lost people, they're all going to go, oh, it's just some kind of thunder, some noise. Some kind of angelic alien, some outer space, just some weird communication. And then we're going to have to take our technology to uh, read through that noise and see, communicate and find the alien language. This ain't Steven Spielberg fantasy show. This is real. Yeah. And they're going to distinguish that. Lost people will do that. How do you know Christians are going to tell the voice of God? Oh, we know. Go to John 10. John 10. Are you part of the sheep of God? Are you Amen. saved in Jesus Christ? Then I promise you this, you will know. You will know. And I also guarantee you this, lost people will not know. I promise you that too. Lost people will not know. You know why? Because John 10 shows it. We're going to look at John chapter 10. Look at the Bible. It's amazing. Verse 2, but he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. So here we are trying to go inside God's door. But look at verse 3, to him the porter openeth. Okay, God, I want to enter inside with you. Well, he's going to open that door. But look, and the sheep, are you a sheep? All right, if you're a sheep, hear his what? Voice. And he calleth his own sheep by what? Name. Look at that. You want to enter in with God up in heaven through that door? You're going to tell. He's going to call you up by name. By the way, Look at that verse. And leadeth them what? Out. 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 Boom. We're out of here. Where, where are we getting out of if not out of this world? See, we're, God's taking us out of here, calling us up by name so that we can go up to heaven with him. Now, some people, they're going to insist, oh, you're just inserting that interpretation. Because this is just simply saying that we're going to enter inside Jesus Christ for salvation. This is just entering in salvation. This is not talking about some rapture up to heaven. But here's the thing, okay? Yes, the verse says in, later on in John 10, we agree that passage is about salvation. Because Jesus said, I am the door by me if, if any man will enter in. There's no doubt it's talking about salvation here. But you got to realize this. The reason why this verse is still used for a rapture passage is if God does this with salvation... Don't you think he's going to do that at the rapture? That's really obvious. You know why that's obvious? Let's look at some of the things right here. One, sheep hear his voice. Isn't God's voice going to sound at the rapture? If he does that with salvation, he's going to do that at the rapture. We saw verses on that. Number two, it says right here, we enter in through the door. Verse two. Look at Revelation 4. Revelation 4. Keep your hand at John 10. Keep your hand at John 10. But go to Revelation 4 now. Revelation 4. Remember this verse where it says, come up hither? It's like a rapture up to heaven. But look, look at verse 1, Revelation 4, 1. 
After this I looked, and behold, a what? Door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard. Look at that. You're going in through a door, and God's voice is calling. Look, John 10, if God does that, with the door opening and his voice, come on, it's obvious he's going to do that at the rapture. Keep reading. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me. See, not only that, it's calling the person. Yeah. John 10 says he's calling the sheep. Look, there is no doubt. If God does that with salvation of your soul, you don't think he's going to do that with the salvation of your body? Amen. Was as, is, what, uh, was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, notice, come up hither. Oh, there ain't a rapture, there ain't a rapture. Well, then look at Revelation 11, where it says, come up hither. What do you think that meant? These two dead bodies died, and they went up to heaven at Revelation 11. Post-trippers cannot deny that. When God says, come up hither, it means going up to heaven with him. See? So the, it's very strong right here, but let's... Not only that, let's look at other verses. Look at John 11. John 11. This is also proven with resurrection. Look at John chapter 11. When God resurrects something, I'm going to tell you one thing. When God resurrects something, He does call by name. Hey, at the rapture, we're all going to be resurrected, right? And changed. We're going to go to heaven. When God resurrects people, He does call people specifically. You know why? Because what he wants to do is pick up a specific individual who will go to heaven with him and not other people. Look at John chapter 11. You don't believe me? Oh, God never did that. Well, look at John chapter 11. You don't read much Bible, do you? Look at John chapter 11. That book is amazing every single time. And you're going to look at verse 43. How did Jesus Christ resurrect this dead person to life? This is how he was resurrected. And when he thus had spoken, look at that phrase, he what? Cried with a loud voice. Is God going to do that at the rapture? Yes. But look what he does when he resurrects this person with a loud voice. Name, Lazarus, come forth. Look at that. God did that. God's going to do that with you. Oh, how do you know that? Because he did that before at the resurrection. Not only that, John 10 says... He calls you out by what? Name. Oh, that's only salvation. No, trust me, that's not just salvation. John, who wrote the book of John 10, and John, who wrote the book of Revelation, he realized that what? The rapture is the same thing as salvation. They're going to do the same thing. I mean, if you've got a door open in heaven, God's calling you out, and there's some sort of going up to heaven, and I mean, what, and God's trumpet voice, what more will convince you that John 10 is the same thing with your rapture God's going to do. And we're not done to build up the evidence. One more thing. If the shepherd does that with you in salvation, he's going to do the same thing with your rapture. Look at 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. You should be convinced by now John 10 is your rapture. Not just your salvation, but also your rapture. Look at 1 Peter 5. If God does that with his sheep in salvation... That shepherd will do the same action for the sheep at the rapture. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. And we will read verse 4. And when the what? Chief shepherd shall what? Boom. He shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. He's going to do the same thing, that shepherd. Isn't it interesting? That's why we're not going to turn there. Isn't it interesting? That's why at Revelation 5 and 6 mysteriously all these saved people up in heaven before the first seal of the tribulation is open, what did God say? Behold the lamb that was slain. Boom. See, when God comes down, he doesn't come as conquering king. He comes down as a shepherd for the sheep. But when he comes down right here, he comes down as king and conquer. Revelation 19, it's not a shepherd. It's a king of kings and lord of lords. That's what's going to happen. Not lowly, humble, meek, and mild Jesus. It's a conquering king. So you see right here how the Bible amazingly shows you that this rapture, when it's going to sound, bless God, I can't wait for that day. Amen. When he calls us out, it, we're going to hear a noise. Where it's, and we're going to hear this noise with the trumpet voice of God. And then God's going to say, Gene Kim, come up hither. And then I'm going to uh, nudge the 
one of my family members who's not saved, I'm going to say, did you hear that? And that lost family member of mine says, what? What? I just heard a thunder. And then guess what? We're gone. And that family member is going to be in shock and say, what just happened right here? But you know what that was. That was God calling you. To the lost people, it was terror. It's chaos. It's phenomenon. And you know what? That does not have to be you. You can be the one at peace. You can be the one who hears that as God calling your name. Amen. Not as a lost person who hears that as thunder and you see missing people and you panic. It's so simple to get saved. You just, with the, as a repentant sinner, you tell God, God, I only trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, not in my good works or anything else, just in you. And when you become that, you become his sheep. And then when he calls you out, he's going to call your name one day. And you're going to hear your name and you're going to go up. But if you're lost and you're not saved, it's going to be a day of terror. You're going to hear it as thunder. You're going to think some kind of angels or aliens have stolen those people. And then you're going to go through that horrendous event of the tribulation. And when those seven trumpets sound, see, it's not, it's not going to be a day of comfort. To us, it's a comfort, right? We want that to sound. But when those seven trumpets sound, it's not comfort to them. It's terror. Yeah. It's chaos. It's judgment. There is no doubt this has to be different from this one. Because we look forward to this one. Yeah. We don't look forward to that one. There is no doubt.